Okay, so for question 12, year 12, we have got to show that this is identical to this here. So all we're going to do is we're going to start with the left hand side and all we're going to do is manipulate the left hand side until we end up with what's on the right hand side, which is 4 minus 5 cos theta. So the first thing I know is that sine squared theta can be replaced with 1 minus cos squared theta. Minus 7 cos theta plus 2 all over 2 cos theta plus 3. It can just be written like that. You can write it either way around. It doesn't make much of a difference. Then after that, if I um, expand and simplify my numerator, I get 10 minus 10 cos squared theta minus 7 cos theta plus 2 which therefore means on my numerator I'll end up with 12 minus 7 cos theta. Sorry, it's meant to be a theta, I've got a bit wrong, let me try again. Minus 7 cos theta uh, minus 10 cos squared theta all over 2 cos theta plus 3. So what we need to spot now is that the numerator can be factorised. If we rewrote our numerator as 12 minus 7x minus 10x squared, it becomes a little bit more apparent that it can be factorised. We can also bear in mind that the, num the denominator sorry, can currently be written as 2x plus 3. So that means I know pretty much that 2x plus 3 or 2 cos theta plus 3 will be one of my terms on my numerator. Then the other term, well, it's 3 and we need to have 12 at the beginning. So this is going to be a 4. And then this is 2 cos theta. And we need to have 10 cos, we need to have negative 10 cos squared theta. So minus 5 cos theta here, like that. After that, this and this cancel out. And so we are left with 4 minus 5 cos theta. Again, I've drawn a really bad theta symbol there, which is what we were aiming to get to. So I'm just going to finish off with as required. Okay. Okay, so for part B, year 12, you've done all of the hard work in part A, which is why it says hence here. So we're going to use what we've done in part A to help us. So this whole thing, this whole expression, can be written as 4 minus 5 cos x. The first thing I would do is I would subtract 4 from both sides of my equation. And when I subtract 4 from both sides of the equation, I get this. We can't solve this yet because we want it all in terms of one variable, not in terms of cos and sine. So I would be making use of this identity here, which is that sine x over cos x is tan x. So how about we then divide both sides by cos x? Leaving me with minus 5 equals, and it'd be 3 sine x over cos x, which is the same as 3 tan x. Now we want this all just in terms of tan x, so I would divide by 3. giving minus 5 over 3 equals tan x. So into my calculator now, I'm going to do tan inverse tan minus 5 over 3. And when I put that into my calculator, uh, inverse tan minus 5 divided by 3, I get one of my answers. Well, my solution, my principal solution is minus 59.0 degrees. Problem being that's not within our range because our range initially was 0 to 360. Not a problem. Really quickly thinking about what your tan graph looks like. So your tan graph looks something like that. And so it's got an asymptote at 90 and then it repeats again. So my tan graph, again I've got on that really badly, um, my tan graph repeats every 180 degrees. So to find the, the, 
the, the solutions within our interval that we want within the interval 0 to 360. We just need to add 180 degrees. So when we do that, we get a solution of 120 point uh, 121.0 if we round. And again, there'll be another solution within that range, which we can find by adding on 180, which is 301.0 degrees. So our final solutions are these.